Introducing the astounding new Infiniti M56. A bold new entry, setting sail on an uncharted course of luxury car form and design. A love letter to design, written in boron steel. The M56 represents a design departure, unique, a fender line, a sculpture, a trim, and... Okay, the Infiniti M56 may not be a completely unique design, but it is a step up in style from the look-alike family sedans you'll be passing on the road. And you will pass them, because the M56 has power to spare. Well, the first thing we notice in a full throttle situation is that this is a car with significant electronic input to the throttle and brake. When you issue a throttle or brake command to this car, you're not giving it a command, you're giving it a request. And the car is going to fulfill it any way it wants. In many ways, this Infiniti is the car that wants to take care of you. There's lane departure warning. It watches the curve. See, you hear that beep? It says, hey, you're going over the white line, be careful. And it's got a very intrusive traction and stability control system. Even in sport mode, this transmission is reaching for higher gears. We're getting a kick down with many of the throttle response calls. Give me a chance to operate the throttle and brake myself. You can trust me, I promise. I'd like to tell you all the features this car has, but I don't understand them and we don't have time to learn them all. This is a feature-packed car. The owner's manual has a very important part about AFS. It explains that under 16 miles an hour, one headlight will turn to match your steering direction if AFS is selected. Above 16 miles an hour, both headlights will turn. If anybody knows why they would do that, feel free to write me care of Left Lane News. I have to say that the wood in this car is unbelievably tasteless, but I just really like it. Not all the materials are subtle, but they are all assembled in a painstaking, meticulous fashion, and they are all high quality. Even if silver impregnated wood isn't your thing, you still have to simply admire the way this car was put together, and you have to admire the quality of the materials all around you. One potential fly in the ointment is the position of the touchscreen. I've got pretty long arms, I can just barely reach the touchscreen here. If I were shorter, I don't know what I would do. I'd have to use the dial controller, and the dial controller interface is not always the best for what we have to do in this car. I'm not allowed to play the stereo for you guys. I think my taste in music would drive people to a competing website. But take it from me, this is a good stereo. If you've heard the phrase, electronic leash, used before, in regards to a car's stability control, well, here's a new definition. The reason we can left foot brake securely in this car is because it has an automatic seat belt tensioning system. When the car feels that you're about to crash, or you're doing something really fun, it will go ahead and pull this belt tight. We're talking CG lock tight, almost race harness tight. Audi had the Procon 10 system, which was based on an explosive charge within the belt itself. But now with this car, we've got fully electric seat belt tensioning that the car itself can control. It can tighten the belt, it can loosen it. This is a technologically powerful car, but it's also powerful beneath the hood. Does the rest of the M56 live up to the challenge of the engine? I like the steering in this car. It's responsive, it's accurate, and it feels trustworthy. The ride on this car is very good. I've been driving a lot of luxury and near-luxury cars lately, and in this particular car, which is an all-wheel drive car with the all-season tires, I would say the ride is very good. Given the choice, I'd be hard-pressed to select all-wheel drive for my M56. I just don't like the way the drivetrain interacts with the computer. I want to be able to smoke the tires off the line. I want to be able to put a little bit of action in the dynamic balance of the car. The all-wheel drive system, the computer controls, they're conspiring to prevent me from doing that. For the vast majority of drivers, the electronic safeguards in the M56 will be a positive thing. This car has more power than a Ferrari Testarossa, and it could get you in trouble quickly. That would be a shame, 
because if you crash this infinity, you're going to miss out on something special. Unless you're a card-carrying racer, however, the electronic safeguards in the M56 are more help than hindrance. Just relax and enjoy the M56 for what it is, high fashion, inside and out. I think that if the Japanese brands ever want to achieve parity in terms of reputation with BMW and Mercedes-Benz, they have to make luxury cars that are authentically Japanese the same way that a BMW is authentically German. With the last few generations of Q45 and M45, Infinity is working towards a Japanese luxury aesthetic. From the cheerful, intrusive nature of the electronic helper systems, to the very origami way in which the dashboard is folded and assembled, this car feels authentically Japanese. This is nothing like a BMW, it's nothing like a, a Benz, it's nothing like a Lexus. It's recognizably a Nissan product and it's recognizably an Infiniti. The original Q45 was a great car. The Q45s that followed and the M45s that followed have not necessarily been great cars. This car is on the path to greatness.